What's up? We have a whole new slate of films to discuss. And because of that, I don't want to waste too much time. So let's jump right into this one. Lisa Frankenstein. Let's do it. I had a lot of movies that I wanted to get to this Halloween season, and I had a list, an extensive list. And Lisa Frankenstein was one of those movies on the list. Now, a lot of people have talked to me about this movie, and I figured it was a unique one enough for me to be interested in watching this movie. And, and honestly, I was curious about it, so I figured, what the heck? This was a fun movie, actually. <laughs> it was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I didn't know really what I was going to expect from it, other than the fact that it was going to be a different kind of love story. That was my thought going in, and that's all I really took with me going into the experience. I enjoyed the 80s aesthetic. As an 80s baby, it's hard to argue the charm of that time period. So shoot me. I love the 80s and, you know, any movie that leans into the aesthetic and energy of that time period always gets points for me. And and not only that, it leans into the aesthetic in every way that you want. So obviously from clothing, hairstyles, uh, cars, uh, music choices, obviously, uh, dec- decor, um, set design Uh, it's just it's just all there and that's one of the things i think i noticed immediately uh, from the off the idea that when you look at any shot of the film uh, with the exception of the beautifully animated um, intro sequence which i'm going to talk i want to go back to that i'm talking about talk about that Uh, every shot of this movie feels like uh, the 1980s it's not too modern It, it you know it's just the only thing that's the most modern thing about this movie is the camera that was used to, to shoot it. <laughs> it's the it's the sharpest element of of what's on screen, um, and I think it looks it looks it looks real nice. I enjoyed how the movie leans in and just totally identifies with its nineteen nineteen eighties uh, energy. It feels like you're in the nineteen eighties. There's no placard, you know, no no nothing on the screen to denote the time other than what you're seeing. I like how. The movie doesn't start with, hey, 1988 or whatever it is. We, you know, that's revealed to us. Like the actual specific year is revealed more or less organically in the movie. And that's cool. You want the, I I want, as an audience member, I want what I see on screen to tell me everything I need to know about what I'm experiencing. And this movie does that. And that's gangster. I like that. <laughs> Another aspect I really enjoyed about this movie was the beautifully animated opening sequence of the film, which details the backstory of who we will come to be kn- to know in the movie as the creature played by Cole Sprouse. And it's, it's, it's an unexpected um, choice. I didn't expect an animated intro introduction to begin the movie and in fact there was a moment i knew what i watched was i was what i was watching but there was a second during the during the sequence where i questioned whether or not i was watching the right movie (laughs) so i had to like check go back to my to to the menu and see am i watching okay this is lisa frankenstein right okay all right it's the right movie (laughs) but yeah it was it was it was a beautiful sequence and almost haunting and sad a little bit too but sad in the best ways in the ways that gets you charged for what's going to happen you feel for this guy whose name we never get to know but you oddly still are charmed by by this character a couple of the things i noted about noticed about this movie was that for one it felt like a dash of edward scissorhands and i don't know a little bit of weird science or any other a handful of other high school coming of age movies from the decade with a sort of romantic um, science fiction-y uh, twist. And you get this movie, 
with the added element of the horror. So this is like a horror romantic comedy uh, situation. Interesting mix of genres. And it does work overall. It works. It's fun. It's not super deep. I think I just think it's it's a it's a it's a fun time. Cole Sprouse, who if you don't know or if you don't remember, uh he was one half of, of the acting team along with his brother Dylan in the television show Sweet Life of Life of Zach and Cody. I don't know if you remember that show. And I, I sing a lot of Cole Sprouse because I actually enjoyed his performance in this movie. He has a whole range of stuff he gets to play without actually ever speaking any words throughout the movie you know for the majority of the movie (laughs) it's pretty cool to see it's pretty cool to watch him portray stuff and communicate without words but just grunts it looks like it was a lot of fun for him as an actor to 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 get into that so i i enjoyed his performance liza soberano who plays taffy lisa's stepsister she fits perfectly into this world of the 1980s as a you know shallow high school student who's beautiful and a little bit self-centered, but not so self-centered that she's not thinking about her sister. And that's the thing I love about this character. She's very sweet in a way. Yeah, she's like one of the popular, she's one of the popular girls at school, but she's not a mean girl. And I like the dimensions of her character. She, um, Liza Soberano does a really good job and imbues the character with a lot of um, sincerity and heart. And so when things start going south, you start feeling more for this. She's the character that actually makes you feel the most outside of all the absurdity. There's like a lot of weird stuff happening in this movie and stuff that's kind of outright absurd that plays into the comedy uh, elements of the movie. Um, but she gives it a, a groundedness. So you start, you, st- you feel more when things start uh, getting jacked up. Liza Sobrano is a, is a good character to, to stick to when you're thinking about those things watching this movie. I thought Catherine Newton as the lead was capable. She was a good lead and she's quirky enough and she's, she's likable even though she, you know, she does questionable things. <laughs> but I liked her as, as the lead. I think the one character in this movie that was questionable for me was the character of Janet, um, Lisa's stepmom, played by the wonderful Carlo Gugino. I I will tell you, it was hard for me to buy her as the evil stepmom. Not because she wasn't good at, at it, because she was very good and convincing. And she's a, look, she's a good actor, so she you buy it. But personally... It was hard for my brain to accept her as the not nice stepmom. I think that's what it is. That sort of took me out of the proceedings a little bit. Not that she wasn't good again. She it's not she was good. I guess I, I didn't like her in the role. I didn't like that as the role for her. So I guess my brain was like, no, I don't believe this. I'm not buying into that. Skip that. <laughs> again, that's nothing to do with the movie. You know, that doesn't make the movie any worse or better or whatever. It's just the it's just the just an observation I had. I, I I had a hard time buying that. Because she's just so awesome. So from a storytelling perspective, this it, the movie has a good a lot of good things going for it in terms of the um like themes. Like you have uh there's this notion, this is element of like longing. Lisa, when we meet her at the start of the movie, she's uh still grieving the loss of her mom, which had taken place not long before the events of the movie. There's a sense of also, uh, you know, so we have grief, longing, and these, you know, the longing for what? Love and longing for connection. Those things are very universal themes. You also have, obviously, death uh, is a major uh, uh, theme. You know, she's, she's lost her mom. She's hanging out at a graveyard. She's surrounded by by death it never and, and the, never mind she's young and obsessed with you know you could argue she's obsessed with death through by way of obsessing you know visiting this particular gravesite of someone who's been dead for more than 100 and some odd years uh and so there's the, but there's a lot of there's a lot to that yeah there's a conversation there about death love these huge concepts 
connection and grief. And I like how the movie touches on each of these things in a way that's meaningful. You could, but you could argue probably the biggest ones in this movie are probably love, and not just not just romantic love because there is there is some there there is uh, love in terms of uh, family, like particularly particularly with Taffy and and um, and Lisa. Taffy, as a stepsister, regardless of how she moves at school or whatever, she does love Lisa. She's you know she does have a heart and soft spot for Lisa, so the which is beautiful. I, I actually enjoy that relationship. Um, and then, of course, you have the romantic element where Lisa she ends up dealing with the creature, and and that's beautiful in its own way too. So you have that love, and then you have death. Uh, this idea that the, the the creature who is dead and who was once dead is now kind of half alive and on the path to ex- re-experiencing what it was to be alive, although far removed from his own time in the eighteen eighteen hundreds, whenever whenever he, whenever he died. Uh, and so that's another layer. And so the way the film is in conversation with those things is kind of cool. The other thing that's great is the Mary Shelley, the Frankenstein references to the novel. That's endlessly cool. Something about this movie that came up for me was the, the, the that this movie is, okay, it's directed by a woman, written by a woman, and then you have the, the original 18, whatever, 1818 novel, Frankenstein, written by a woman, Mary Shelley. There's some. There's an interesting. That's another conversation. <laughs> that Mary Shelley wrote this book from her own thoughts and influences, things that influenced her to write this book. And then you have whatever, 200 plus years later, this movie, Lisa Frankenstein, with women at the helm. They've constructed and built this movie, um, not without help. Obviously, it's, you know, as a collaborative situation, you had. You had a lot of help, but there are women's names on it. And I like the, the, the conversation that this movie has with Mary Shelley's work. And the Percy Shelley poem at the end of the movie is a nice touch. And if you're, if you're a poet and, or a lover of poetry like myself, you will appreciate those things. I know I definitely did. Diablo Cody offers a mostly strong script. And I say mostly because there were only maybe a handful of parts in the movie where I was taken out of of the space, of the time period. There were a couple of things that felt too remo- too far removed from the 1980s. A couple of phrases, a couple of things jumped out at me that felt, oh, that doesn't sound like something would, some, sound like something somebody would say during that time period. Uh, uh, yeah, so anyway, that was just little things. I'm a stickler for things like that where, and, and obviously these things are not going to be always perfect, but... They come up for me, and again, because I want to be immersed, dialogue, certain things that don't feel true to the time period. If, if, you're, if you're putting together a period piece, if it's not there, if it takes you out, and it's, it, it's, um, it, can, it can shake me as a viewer. So, something else I noted. And while we're talking about the script, I, I, in thinking about Diablo Cody, I just, I'm such a fan of how she's just making stuff that she's interested in. She's not catering to a certain market with the stories she's she's involved with telling. And I'm a fan of that. Jennifer's Body, which I still need to see, it's another movie that she wrote and I remember I remember when it was coming out, it didn't get a lot of positive reviews. My, my sister had seen it and I was she was like, you gotta watch this movie. She was super like thrilled about the movie, uh, and I think the same is true for for Lisa Frankenstein. I, I think Lisa Frankenstein got r- a ton of positive reviews. Uh, the people I've talked to were like a handful of people who really enjoyed the movie, who thought I should see this movie and review this movie. So that's why I'm talking about this movie now. And I think that that you need movies like this too by filmmakers and creators who are just going to make what's going to be in, what's interesting to them, because there are people out there who will enjoy that. Now I did I did generally like this film, so I think th- th- and, right, there's something to be said for that. It doesn't have to be the best movie ever made um, for it to be appreciated. I'm I'm a fan of the way Deborah Cody is just making stuff. So at the end of the day, this is a this is a movie that if you're not going to uh, watch it any other time, <laughs> now is a good time to watch it. 
it's delightfully 80s. It's fun. It's got all the weird stuff you want. It's got a little bit of romance. And if you're if you got a bit of a if you're a hopeless romantic, you might appreciate that type of stuff. Uh, you might also love the dramatics in it. It's dramatically 1980s uh, in terms of how characters move and how they behave and scenarios and things. It's kind of fun. So I would recommend it. And I think it's, it's worth a look. So that's going to do it for this review. I'm jumping out of here right now because we got some more reviews to, 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 to share. So got to get ready. Don't have time to waste. So <laughs> yeah. So if you're still here at this point in the video, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me and talk a little bit of Lisa Frankenstein. Um, I'm going to get out of here because we have more reviews t to look at. So on that note, I'm taking off. Take care. Be well. And I'll see you a little bit later.